Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Todderbert. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us, with a Vigor Time VT16, this is an AM-FM stereo portable radio do-it-yourself kit. I got this off Amazon for a total of $27.99. The may or may not have a coupon. Hopefully there will be. I'll have links below in the description and in the comment section if you're curious about building this kit. I love kits and especially radio kits. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. VT16. Now, as you know, I like this company. Uh, I buy a lot of their kits. I think they're one of the best out there. Comes in a simple black box. Let's go ahead and open it up. They have great instructions, which I love. Um, so if you're doing this for the first, second time, you'll have no problem. Let's go ahead and set the box aside there. All right, so let's see what we get. get the instruction manual looks like it's illustrated. Awesome. Now, I built their other radio, and it looks like they made improvements. Of course, we got two speakers, but they also orientated the ferrite bar in the right direction for the AM band. Nice to see that. So let's open this up and see what we get. All right, get these directions out of here. Okay, I'm seeing a large PCB here. It's a bubble wrap. We'll take that out. Okay, we're gonna get, uh, let me use a board here so we don't lose anything. That way we can see the blue too. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna zoom this down. Okay, look at the PCB real quick. Uh, this is the back side, looks like. Uh, gives you speaker connections. Looks like a little DSP chip there. Maybe that's the radio on a chip. Let's see if we can't get those into focus. There you go, if you guys can see that or not. Okay. It looks like those same numbers are printed below as well. <laughs> okay, going to the front of the board. Uh, spot for the AM antenna. The speakers, we got, looks like an amplifier circuit right here. Nice. Okay, looks like a pretty straightforward build. FM antenna goes there. And it's got a handle. Check it out for your boom box. <laughs> Carry it anywhere. I love it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's uh, see what's in the bag. Bring this up here. Okay, so we got a battery box and direct connection and our antenna mast. Nice. We have the ferry antenna in its own bag there. It's 120, milli 120 millimeters, if you're wondering, or four, almost four and three quarter inches. Nice. Hopefully it gets good reception. I'm not sure. Depends. Sometimes you get lucky with a kit radio and they work fantastic. Texan uh, 2P3 AM radio kit is an amazing kit as well. So we've got some mounting hardware. Get everything out of this bag. Okay, let's see what we get for stuff. So move that up there. Yeah, we get some standoffs. Looks like we get that, uh, maybe that's an amplifier chip with an IC. In case you mess something up, at least you can take the chip back out and put a new chip in. We got some ceramic capacitors. Uh, we got crystal, some diodes, nice. We also have uh, some knobs. Those look pretty fancy, like aluminum. The geometers, nice. Ah, oh, nice little guide. See, I like this. This is cool. I hope that one's kind of falling out there. This is like a shows you how to read the resistors, and they're all color coded right there for you on the card. Love it. Oh, that's a nice touch. Okay, and then what else we got? We have a bag of electrolytic capacitors and some switches, and the power jack, and looks like a tuning or power on indicator. I think that's a tuning LED, so hopefully that works well too. And last but not least, we have the two speakers. Um, yeah, they're not gigantic, but uh, I'll do a little mini review when I'm done building this kit. I got the hookup wire there. Beautiful. All right, so there's the kit. All the parts and pieces. <laughs> Boom. Nice. So what I'm going to do is set this aside. And Oh, yeah, I can't forget about the AM antenna as well. Set this parts aside and show you what I'm going to use to build this kit. And then we'll go over the build process. So let's go ahead and move this out of here. And we're just going to bring this back into frame. Pretty cool. 
Awesome. I like that. Hang on, I'm just going to put it in the corner there. There we go. BT-16 AM FM radio. That's going to be fun to carry around. <laughs> I am going to carry it outside. I'm going to prove and take pictures, too. Um, tools I'm going to use. Well, first, solder, right? Always got to have that. I use 6040 tin lead based. Um, just wash your hands after using it. It'll be fine. I use a real thin uh, style. This is, uh, what is it? Uh, almost just under a millimeter. So really fine uh, solder. I do like using that for smaller components such as this and even finer components. So we have this solder here. I use a loop to uh, identify uh, you know, uh, bad traces, uh, if I've jump made jumps on circuits. Uh, this one probably doesn't need it, but I'll keep it handy. I also have uh, number two Phillips for mounting different things. Made in USA. People like to see that. Yeah, beautiful thing, right? A few things here are made in the USA I'm going to show you. Let's see, my side cutters for cutting off the extra component legs. These are really nice. Zeron. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, these are made in USA. Beautiful. Great shears to take the component legs off. Oh, these are a nice pair. I like that. I upgraded. Okay, what else we got for tools? Um, I got my little... I think these are made in Japan. Um, yeah, these are little diagonal pliers I used to tighten the little screws. Works out pretty simple. Those, what else do I got handy here? I got... Another Craftsman tool, which I might use to strip the wires if I need to. Uh, these are great. Line up the gauge wire and then strip. Beautiful thing. These are awesome. I love having these. And of course, you know, Craftsman's usually USA. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that because, you know, people always go, hey, I want stuff made in USA. Well, a lot of your tools are, so that's good. And then let's see what else we got. Another Craftsman. This one was Pro Tool. Doesn't say it anymore. Must have rubbed it off. A uh, little mini Phillips. It's coming into focus there. There you go. Don't know if I'll need that. I don't think there's any small screws, but there is. My final thing I'm going to use is my Optivisor. Now, I don't know if you guys have one of these. Um, it's, I think it's running about one and a half power. I think it's the number four is. It's got number four lens. You can change these lenses in and out. Stereoscopic vision. Um, these are great. Yeah, Optivisor. You can see kind of magnifier there differences it does pretty good and when you're wearing your head you don't get a headache too which is fantastic so optivisor made in usa by donegan optical so there you go not a safety device so if you are worried when you're trimming uh, your component legs use safety glasses as well so yeah i'll be using these two these are nice it has a full head strap that goes around it's adjustable on the back here which is really handy as you can see, this tilts up and down out of your vision. It has little side mounts. So those are some of the tools I'm going to use. So bring this up to build this kit. So rock on. So yep, go ahead and move these back out. And when I am done, I'll have some pictures of the build process. And then we'll do a little review. We'll see how well this worked. Um, I'll do an FM uh, report. Maybe we'll do a little audio demonstration with it, because if it is FM, I can do the um, radio Totterbert transmitting on my little FM transmitter, and we'll hear how it sounds. Um, I'll let you know how good it says it's supposed to be stereo, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we'll have to see if it's true stereo sound. It would have been cool if they added a headphone jack. I thought that would be really neat. Then you'd have stereo on headphones as well. But I don't see a headphone jack. I didn't see one in the bag, so. Uh, but it's going to be a fun project nonetheless. And we'll have to see how sensitive it is with almost a 5-inch antenna. Loving it. Alrighty. So there it is in the raw form. Uh, when I come back, I'll have it completed, and I'll have pictures of the build process. So wish me luck. Here are pictures of the build process. In the first picture, I populated the PCB with 12 resistors, 9 capacitors, 1 inductor, and 2 diodes, no polarity, plus a crystal oscillator. Now in the second picture, I added two switches, one 16-pin IC socket, a power jack located on the back side, and three electrolytic capacitors, no polarity. In this last picture, I finished the project by adding two potentiometers, 
speakers, both AM and FM antennas, battery box, and I installed the LM4863 audio amplifier IC. Note the orientation. So let's look at the bench. Here is the final product. AM FM radio do-it-yourself kit VT16. It's an amazing radio. I love it. Uh, so what we're going to do here is just take a quick look at it and then we'll do like a mini review of the radio. So I got a box underneath here. We'll slide that out of the way. All right, so let's do a close-up of what I got done. The most important things are putting the potentiometers in. Those are the ones that gave me the most trouble. I needed some extra heat on that area and that area because they're larger surfaces that needed attention. But as you can see, everything went together fairly simple. Liking that. This nice antenna, AM antenna. Wait till you hear this thing in action. On the back side, you can see the two speakers mounted with their screws. And of course, the DSP chip, which is an amazing chip, by the way. Um, if you guys need the data sheets, uh, just email me. Uh, my email address is in the About section on my YouTube page, and it's also on my website. So you can check that out. So yeah, the build process went really smooth. Like I said, all straightforward. This kit could probably be like your second or third. So let's go ahead and do dimensions of the finished product. So when your kit is complete, the dimensions will be six and three eighths of an inch in width. We have a height with the handle, four and three quarter inches. You can take this antenna and kind of put it behind the handle if you want. It puts a little tension on the PCB, but not much. And then of course we have a depth of two and a quarter inches. That includes the front knob here to the back battery box. There you go. So for size comparison, I'll just lay the radio right on top of here. We have a CC pocket. Gives you an idea. It's a current time, 11.26 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and I'm near Chicago, Illinois. If we do some tuning tonight, which we should be able to. I gotta go pretty quick, because I'm gonna cover quite a bit here. Uh, CC Skywave. And then last but not least, we have a deck of cards. Iron Man, he's the man with the master plan. He loves Vigor Time. Do-it-yourself radio kits from China Land. He rocks. <laughs> Pretty awesome. All right. So there you go. Size comparison down. Uh, so yeah, got that. Uh, so let's go over features of the VT-16. Right away, uh, we went over this. The AM antenna installed. It can be installed in the front or the back side, which is nice. I chose to keep it on the front to kind of show the radio off. And people can ask what that's about, and I can explain it. So it's four and three quarter inches or 120 millimeters. It's very sensitive. The circuit is amazing when you start to hear what you can pick up with this. The whip antenna is actually rotates 360 degrees and extends out to a 13 and three quarter inch length. So yeah, you can pivot that around. You actually can move that behind that without any tension. I forgot it does pivot 360. Love that. Uh, so very good. Um, tuning, as you notice, there is no dial, you have to go by ear. It's actually not that difficult. I have no problem going through the entire band. Now you get the full FM band and the full AM band. Yes, you get it all. <laughs> it's a, a great radio. Um, very happy with it. LED tuning light, FM AM band switch, your on off power control. There's the audio amplifier circuit. Um, again, very basic, our little inductor. Uh, the two speakers here, two inch speakers on each side. They're fairly bright toned. Uh, there, there's no low end here, so expect kind of a tinny sound, but it's good for talk radio, classical music, anything with medium and highs to it will sound fantastic. You'll love it. And the stereo sound sounds amazing, but you got to have your face pretty close to the radio because these speakers are pretty close together. Now, if you want better separation, maybe you build little boxes for these speakers and you extend them out with the wires. It's an idea. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's that. So there's the features. Um, what we're going to do here now is I'm going to set the radio aside. We're going to look at the manual real quick before we turn the radio on. And then we'll talk a bit more about the radio and we'll demo it. So, yeah, the instructions I forgot to show in the beginning, so we'll show them now. I'm just going to lay it right down so you guys can just pause. And look, there's your components and parts list. I'm sure that you should be able to pick it up. How to read the resistor color code. Over here, your principal overview and remarks. And contact information if you need the PDF. Now I have the PDF. If you guys need it, contact me as well. The schematic diagram, very important uh, to have this. Um, 
Pay close attention to this area right here. I had to make some changes to this radio and I'll explain it. Uh, the FM and AM was tuned for the European market, not the US market when I got this. So the resistor values were different. But I found out with the data sheet that you can actually change these resistor values so you can get US FM and US AM, get the right stepping, and also uh, the right tuning. So we'll talk about that. I got those sheets to show you, but really neat. How to identify uh, their values, great. And then we're just gonna open this up, show you the instructions how to build this really quick, and then we will go to the radio. So let me just do this. Yeah, I had a fun time building the kit. Uh, found out that, yeah, it's a European kit, and they're gonna make changes. I emailed them and told them if you're gonna sell it in the US, if you could change these resistors, and they're going to. So uh, future kits will have this. And if, they're, and if your kit doesn't have the updated resistors to make a 10 kilohertz stepping, then um, I'll give you some uh, options. There'll be some links to uh, a resistor vendor on eBay I found who sells them pretty cheap, like two bucks for like 20 or 40 of the 1% value ones. Absolutely amazing. So right now I'm just showing you the steps of building the radio. Again, in case you lose your manual or your manual is gone, you have this for posterity. And we're almost done. We're gonna get this radio turned on. So there's the last page. Okay, done with that. So with the radio, let's get it back into action here. Bring it front and center. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to turn it on. We're going to go on the FM band. And then we'll talk about the AM band and what I had to do to change everything. Um, so let's go ahead and just turn this on. We'll demo it. Okay, we are on FM. Let's tune. There we go, Radio Totterbird. Using the FM transmitter, C Crane. Uh, transmitting on 97.7 with royalty free music from YouTube. For an attached player for my Sony there. Broadcasting to this radio so you can get an idea what it sounds like. Love this kit. Okay, we'll turn that down. 
So there's the audio demonstration. I do want to mention that these speakers have a hiss to them. Let me go ahead and show you that. So I'll turn it off. Right now we're it's broadcasting silence. A little bit on the FM. Then we turn this all the way down. You'll hear that it has a hiss at zero volume. We turn the volume up just from zero. It cuts away. That's something to do with the amplifier circuit. Mention to the company they're going to look into it. So maybe they can modify something. Or it's no big deal. It To me, it's just a one little thing. And it's not a, you know, for me it doesn't bother me. Some people it might bother them. There's AM. Okay, so what I want to do is talk about FM reception real quick. FM reception report. Everybody likes to know how good was the FM. Um, I tune it in one location when I do all my radios. And I found about 62 stations. We'll put you in a three-star category. I have fair, okay, good, uh, very good, and excellent, so five-star rating. Uh, most like average analog radios from back in the day, like this GE uh, pocket radio. Not really pocket, but big radio. <laughs> it's all analog. It gets about 48 to 50 stations, putting it in the okay to good category. This being a DSP chip, finds more stations. And yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. So yeah, it definitely got a good rating on sensitivity and selectivity is good as well. Uh, if the antenna was longer, it might pick up more. So we'll go ahead and just pivot this up. We're going to do an FM band scan. We're going to show you AM real quick. But before I do get started, I want to mention what changes I did to this board. So uh, to make this uh, work on an, on the uh, US market, uh, I had to change three resistor values. Okay, so you're going to need to buy uh, two types. Um, you're going to need to buy the 160 K ohm resistors, and you need to buy one of the uh, 68K resistor. So I'll tell you what I changed. So R4 changes from 47K to 68K, so you can get the uh, FM75 uh, the emphasis, which I'll show you on the sheet. And up here in R3, that's to help set the 9 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz for AM band. There's five different AM bands for this DSP chip. Amazing. Uh, the value there is 160K uh, ohm. And if you can zoom in, you can see the color banding on those. Okay. And then R2 has to change. R2 is the total to ground, and that had to go to 160 as well. So R2 is 160, R3 changed to 160, and R4 changed to 160, or changed to 68, excuse me. So used to be 47, now 68. R3 used to be 191. Then R2 was 150, and now it's 160 for balance. And I'm going to show you some cool sheets real quick, and then we'll get turning this on. Uh, yeah, it's a little long video, but this radio is so cool. It's worth the time. I wanted to go over this. So here's the sheets. Uh, like again, you can email me for these. Uh, this is the band definition, which is cool. This chip has uh, ability to have shortwave as well. So this kit can do more than you can imagine, and you can actually modify it yourself if you so please, and it can do quite a bit. If you had switches and resistor values, you can actually access the shortwave that's uh, built into the chip as well as a stereo LED, and there's even bass trouble controls as well. But looking at what I had to change here to get the uh, FM correct, uh, right here you can see uh, band 3, uh, 87 to 108. To get to the de-emphasis of 75, I had to install resistor of 67K to ground. So that's the last resistor. If you look at the schematic that I showed you, you can rewind, uh, it shows that that value is 47, I changed to 67. Okay, so that means that uh, the band changes for the AM band, so we just go to the AM band. As you can see, there's 18 FM bands. <laughs> That's crazy. But if you want this file, let me know. Uh, so for the AM band, uh, you can see um, originally from the factory, it was 9 kilohertz stepping. It was 237. So then when I, I lowered it, uh, it came out to 227 to access band 19. So now I have the 10 kilohertz stepping between 520 and 1710 versus the 9 kilohertz stepping it was when it shipped. So there you go. That's total to ground again, 227. So if you look at the sheet, R3 comes before R4, so you got to add those up. 160 plus the 68 will give you that. So, well, close to it. That 68 value is what you get, and uh, one that 1K value is not enough to change it, so it's perfect. And then down here, we have shortwave bands. If you get so inclined, you can build the radio. The shortwave... And then the last page here tells you that you need to, from tune one to ground, has to have a total of 500k ohm resistance. Okay, so that's what you have to do after you do all your selecting your bands. You have to make sure the total resistance is that value. 
and we that's why I had to change R2. So there it is. Cool. So let's get turn the radio on. All right. Just quickly zip through it. Now I'm going to do dedicated AM band scan, so we're not going to spend much time on AM, but we will uh, go to FM, turn it on, zip up through the band, go to the bottom. Okay, turn that off. Tunes beautifully. Love this radio. This kit is probably one of the best kits I've built for performance. Coming in stereo. <laughs> Downstairs in the basement, it's coming in pretty good. Coming in good. A lot of stations. Okay, top of the band, so let's switch to AM. And then we'll quickly do final thoughts. So we're at 6, 1700 at the top of the band. We're going to tune down real quick. It's tuned perfectly. All these homes that he acquired, nobody knows where he got the money for them. Is the insurance progressive makes bundling easy and affordable. More than hell, yeah. Little few renovations, even 50,000 out of here. There's a lot of good things in this game uh, that you can, you know. So you get the idea. We're going to, like I said, spend some time and ID all those stations. Um, there's quite a bit. I've picked up uh, WBZ. I've picked up uh, all over. So let's go ahead and turn this off to final thoughts. Um, yeah, totally worth building this kit. Um, like I say, if you get the old kit, you just have to pick up some resistors. Uh, I think, like I said, they're $2 a pack. So I think I had to buy two packs. So I had to spend 4 bucks to um, get the right resistors. Not a big deal. I can use them in future projects. Um, so there it is, the Vulgar Time. Or, Vigor Time, uh, VT16, Vulgar Time as well, same company. Uh, definitely get a big like for me. Uh, definitely check it out. I think you guys will enjoy it. Use the links below for the kit. Uh, if you need the resistors, uh, links below to those as well on eBay. Um, they're all legit links. So, yeah, just remember I changed R4 to 68, R3 to 160, and R2 to 160. And uh, this thing became a beast. <laughs> it's, now it's rocking. This thing is so amazing. Uh, it, it's just one of the best uh, radios I've built. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you did. Two, if you like a bigger time products, you want to see more from them, they're going to make some uh, enhancements. I mentioned about maybe them doing a shortwave radio in the future. That'd be really cool. I think you guys would love to build a shortwave radio. Am I right? If you are, comment below. Say, I want to build a shortwave radio. Um, and then maybe they'll be watch this and uh, see that you've written that. And they will uh, build a kit for you guys. So maybe that's, that'll happen. Uh, <laughs> that'd be neat. So there it is. Uh, and then, of course, you know, subscribe, bell icon. And then three, comment below what you think about the VT-16. Would you build this? Uh, are you going to build a Texan 2, 2P3? Uh, are you into the older uh, kits that I build, like the Mar uh, Marania? Uh, some of those FM kits uh, from IC Station. Let me know. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in my next video.